Hey folks, welcome to the show. This time I got Halo music going on in the background again. So we talk about, I'm just going to move the camera down a bit. There we go. Uh, the Edmonton-Winnipeg game that happened tonight, as you saw in the title, the Oilers won the game in a tight overtime contest. Coming into the game, both teams were our playoff teams, uh, almost assuredly, but have been reeling in their last week or so. But both teams are still very capable. Uh, Connor Hellebach is still Connor Hellebuck and he was absolutely Connor Hellebuck tonight uh, so uh, let's get into it uh, first period is a goaltending battle both goalies make some really good saves I think in the future I'm going to start writing down the notes of when I felt there was a very impressive save that happened because it, I, I'd like to add it in there I, I figured well there might be one or two so I don't need to put in too many but there was quite a few that happened tonight, mostly from Hellebuck, but Skinner had his, uh, some good moments too. Um, so let, again, into the first period, uh, like I said, it was a goaltending battle, but at the four minute and four second mark, uh, Darnell Nurse goes off for tripping. And it was a pretty soft call. I didn't really like it, and I wanted to be fair to the refs because I don't want to I don't want to blame the refs two games in a row. Uh, I mentioned in the Ottawa review, I hate blaming refs i think it's a cop out for uh a lot of fans and Oilers fans don't need much excuse to blame refs and most fans don't uh, Oilers fans are up there too i'll admit and i don't want to be one of those guys but <laughs> watching the Ottawa game i couldn't and this call was pretty soft so it was on my mind but i decided you know i could see what the refs were uh looking at so as long as i understand their call even if i disagree with it i'll be okay and i understood it uh but the important part is that unlike Ottawa, the, or unlike the Edmonton Oilers game against Ottawa, uh, they kill this penalty. They only killed one against uh, the Senators on Saturday, and they k kill a lot more than that today or tonight, uh, including that one. And then there is a fight at the 7 minute and 39 second mark between Logan Stanley and Corey Perry. Uh, neither really got too many big punches in. They both are aware of each other's fighting capabilities and didn't want to give the other one a chance to have a big blow. But eventually one of Stanley's punches for uh, forces Perry to his knee and the refs kind of call it there. Uh, so good fight between those two. And the period ends. Shots are in favor of winning pick 13-10. to 10. And again, both goalies had some notable saves. I thought Skinner was slightly better that pe period than Hellebuck. Hit a few more noteworthy saves and had three more saves that period uh but early in the second period the fortune favors hellebuck as appleton's goal 14th goal of the year goes through uh skinner i don't think it was like when i mean goes through skinner i don't mean like it went he played it badly it was just a a good play by winnipeg and that was four minutes and 43 seconds into that period and he's assisted by adam lowry who i thought had a good game and kyle connor he is uh, there's four Connors playing this game. Speaking of Kyle Connor, uh, Connor Hellebuck, the goalie for the Jets. Kyle Connor, a exceptional American winger for the Jets with superstar abilities. Connor Brown for the Oilers, and of course Connor McDavid. And all all four are uh, either are on the score sheet or is a goalie uh, in Hellebuck's case. Anyways, uh, so it's all it's. Uh, yeah, it's one nothing Jets. They get the early lead, but Edmonton is controlling the second period and throughout it. Uh, eventually, Brendan Dillon lays a big hit on Corey Perry. Uh, Perry is thrown into the box from that hit, and there is some back and forth talking between Nurse and Dillon, which results in a fight between the two. Uh, both got some good punches in, and I'm going to have to give Darnell Nurse the the uh, the victory or raising of the hand, whatever you want to call it, because it, it wasn't like a knockout or anything. Uh, those don't happen much anymore, but like the, it was a, and at first I thought, I felt like, does that count as a win? But I think it, I, I think it does uh, on replay. He kind of, he threw Dylan. He, he, he uh, kind of, they took, he took Dylan and then they went around in 360. And as they came full circle, he kind of threw Dylan and he nurse went down too, but it was, they both went down because of Nurse, so I'm going to have to give Nurse that uh, fight uh, fight victory. So it's two fights in this game, and a rather otherwise pretty clean game. Uh, not to say more penalties come. It was a weirdly clean game for a game that had two fights and two double minors. 
uh, that are coming up. But before that happens, not long after the nurse uh, fight, one minute and 36 seconds after, to be precise, the top line scores. And uh, it's McDavid and Fogel assisting Leon Dreisel, excuse me, on his 38th goal of the year, his 21st goal in 28 games. Uh, and then not long after, less than two minutes after Edmonton takes the lead, it's the other Connor, Connor Brown, scores his third goal of the year and his third in the last six games. Uh, he's assisted by Matthias Eklund and Cody Ceci. But uh, then 30, yeah, just over 30 seconds after Connor Brown uses a stick once again, but not in a good way. He uh, high sticks a Jets player and draws blood. I didn't see blood, but I think the towel was covering it, so I, I assume there was blood. Uh, so Having been blood, it's a four-minute power play, and the Jets have a great opportunity to tie the game and even take the lead. But the Edmonton penalty kill, and in part due to Skinner, because your goalie has to be the best penalty killer, uh, stands tall and kills the entirety of it. And then with one minute out, the Jets are caught. One minute out from the end of the second period, the Jets are caught with a too-many-men penalty. Uh, Nino Niederreiter serves it. Uh, the Jets are able to kill that first minute of it to end the period with the game in favor of Edmonton 2-1 to one, and the shots during that second period 18-4 to four for the Oilers. They had an incredible period. Hellebuck did as well. He made some big saves. Uh, one or two, I guess, got a standing ovation well deserved. Um, Evander Kane before, in between Appleton's goal and Dreisel's goal, Evander Kane had a breakaway and he shoots it and Hellebuck makes a good save on it but he coughs up the rebound and so Kane gets a glorious chance to save it, or to shoot, to score, and Hellebuck loves it. And, uh, yeah, there's not much more Kane could do without pulling a move that echoes Philip Forsberg, or not Philip Forsberg, well, Philip Forsberg, but I meant Peter Forsberg. Uh, great, great job by Connor Hellebuck, and got, got the standing O as usual. It's always weird for me to watch him because it's like, um, I'm not a Jets fan. I don't like what Hellbuck's done to the Oilers in his past. Uh, but I love watching really good goalies. And, I, and I'm a bit biased to American goalies. So I, I enjoy watching him play. But I also don't. I will mention the Jets. I actually like their normal uniforms more than most people. But I love their heritage uniforms. And they were wearing their uh, navy blue uniforms tonight with their red shorts. They're gorgeous. They might be my favorite ever. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if they are, but they are. They would be up there. They would make a top 10 list. Absolutely could even be number one. I don't know. Um, the other number one that comes off my mind just while I'm ranting about it is also navy blue and red, but it has yellow instead of white. It's that Atlanta Thrashers uh, dark uniform, the first one. Anyways, back to the game. So third period comes and begins, and two minutes, 28 seconds in, uh, Josh Morrissey goes off for hooking, and but that uh, shorthanded time is pretty limited. As 16 seconds in, Zach Hyman goes off for hooking, so it becomes a 4-4 four four with uh, some time for Winnipeg on the power play. Neither team was able to score during that time. Not long after, Edmonton Oilers get their own 4-minute power play at the 5-minute and 43rd second mark. Nickel... Nikolaj Ehlers goes off for a high-sticking nurse. Again, I didn't see blood, but it's quite possible the towel was covering it, so I assume it was there. Uh, and the Oilers do capitalize early. What is that? Let me do the math. 20 sec seconds into that, Nugent Hopkins ends his goal of streak of 13 games. He scores his 17th goal of the year and is assisted by Connor McDavid. The Oilers obviously have a, now have a chance to uh, take the lead with more time left on the penalty kill, but the Jets and Connor Hellebuck are able to limit that. And then nine minutes and 39 seconds in the third period, Winnipeg uh, makes it a three to two lead for Edmonton by, or closing the lead. I mean, so it was three to one and they, uh, when it, I miss said that, but oh well, it's fine. Everybody does that. Brandon Dillon scores the 8th goal of the year, making it 3-2 for the Oilers. And he's assisted by Mark Shifley and Neil Pionk. 
Uh, but Winnipeg doesn't take long to tie it up. In fact, exactly one minute after that, Sean Monahan scores his 22nd. Uh, he and many other Jets hit the post quite a bit earlier. Um, but he gets on the board, and he's assisted by Pionk and Ehlers. And now it's a tie game. And there's some back and forth until the 17th minute, 54th second in the third period. Uh Nugent Hopkins is called for a penalty, and he is livid. You don't see Nugent Hopkins get livid that much. And then the camera pans to Oilers head coach Knobloch, who is also quite mad. And like, well, what, what are they mad about? I'm, I'm willing to trust them that the call was egregious, but, you know, let's see. I don't want to blame the refs. I know it's very hard, and I think the NHL has the best refs of uh, the four major leagues, but that's a discussion for another video. And I see it, and there's a stick that hits the Jets player what happened is there was a scrum between two Oilers and two Jets in the Jets corner uh, for the puck and a stick hit a Jets player's face and Nuge just called for it and I said okay all right yeah no that was fair mention I said a stick not Nuge because another angle shows that it was a the other Jets player who had hit the uh, other Jets player's face I, I'm sorry I didn't get names down and Everyone's really confident. Okay, this is going to get uh, called back. It's going to be even strength. Uh, Jack Michaels was thinking that. Louis DeBrusque was thinking that. Everyone at Sportsnet would also say, "Yeah, that's that. Uh, that happens." And obviously, the Ottawa game is on the mind for a lot of Edmonton fans. So we're like, "Okay, well, the refs are taking their time to review it. I'm sure they'll get the right call, right?" Because we got a good angle. They they have better angles than we do. Did not. They said the call stands, and uh, I think a lot of Winnipeg fans felt like they got lucky on that one. And there's so there's lots of concern, and Oilers fans are thinking, you know, it doesn't take much for Oilers fans to blame refs, as I said. And after that Ottawa game, uh, and now possibly losing, like if the Jets score on this power play, there's not a lot of time left for Edmonton to tie it up. They could lose on a very ugly, bad, missed, or not missed, uh bad egregious call but the Oilers penalty kill comes through again and regulation ends tied at three and uh oh so OT comes around and McDavid Dry and Bouchard are out but uh the Jets start a more defensive lineup against that trio uh understandably it's Adam Lowry Morrissey was out and I don't remember the other guy I apologize but those three did very well in shutting down the Oilers uh, top line not giving them a lot of time so that by the time that Oilers time had the puck in the neutral zone because they had it a lot in their own zone but couldn't really get it out by the time they got it out into the neutral zone they were tired and so the next shift comes on and Winnipeg has a chance to win uh, but before they do uh, I should also mention Adam Lowry's line did get a shot but Skinner made a good save but before they could do anything Hyman comes down with a puck uh, and shoots, but it's saved by Hellebuck. But once again, he coughs up a rebound. And unlike Evander Kane, no offense to Evander Kane, uh, Zach Heinen puts it down. This is 51st of the year, and he has the game winner for the Oilers. The Oilers win in overtime 4-3 to three in a very good matchup between these two teams. Um, so, I, you know, I'm not going to, like, call out the Jets too much. There is one area that we're, we're, we can call them out, and I'll get to that. Actually, no, I will get to that now because I already mentioned the final score, and that's shots. Oilers dominated, especially in the second period. Uh, I've, I neglected to mention the third period. Oilers also outshot the Jets 12-7 to and outshot the Jets in OT 2-1. to And so the final shots were 42-25 to for the Oilers. Uh, Connor Hellebuck had an excellent night and, uh, and needed to be excellent. Unfortunately, that's not enough for the win, uh, but... It's a team game, not a goalie game. Uh, sometimes it can be a goalie game, but you have to have a really legendary performance to it, which Hellbuck is absolutely capable of. But you can't ask him to do that all the time. So uh, that game ends that way. The Oilers not only outshot the Jets a ton, but they outhit the Jets a ton, 38 to 28. So it was a pretty physical game. Uh, not a lot of penalties for how physical it was when you have. 66 combined hits in two fights. Uh, Face-offs were slightly in the Oilers' favor at 50.8%. Oilers' power play was 1-for-4, but a perfect 5-for-5. Five five. 
Skinner had a save percentage below 900. He was 22 for 25, but I think it was uh, forgivable. He didn't have a lot of uh, high danger chances. Uh, well, no, he did actually have quite a bit. He doesn't ha didn't have a lot of low danger chances against to pat those uh, pad or yeah pat those stats. But uh, he, I still think he had a good night despite that. Hellbuck had an excellent night, 38 for 42 as well as the standing O. Uh, if I were to do three stars and include the Jets, he'd probably be number one. But since I don't, I'm just sticking with the Oilers. And it's kind of hard to choose because nobody really had like an outstanding night. But there was four or five guys who I thought had an exceptional night. I'll just note McDavid was not one of the final three stars, but he did have two assists. Uh, still pretty good, um, as usual, for him. But the first star I gave to Ryan Nugent Hopkins. He had a goal. He w assisted the game winner, uh, five shots in goal, three hits, 17, 24 minutes of time on ice, an excellent penalty kill. I, uh, two of the stars here of the three I put on there because of the order's excellent penalty kill, which includes the second star, Matthias Eckholm. He had one assist, was a, the best player in terms of plus minus for the orders at plus two, five shots in goal, a hit and a block, just under 20 minutes of ice time, which included a monster 3 minutes and 51 seconds on the penalty kill. DeHarnay led the Oilers on the penalty kill. But that was kind of mostly it for him, so I did, couldn't push him into the 3-star nod. But I could Eklund, who was second on the Oilers in penalty kill time and was excellent on it, as he usually is. Third star, I was kind of thinking McDavid, but I felt like you kind of have to give it to the guy who scored an OT. So it's Zach Hyman with the game-winner goal. Game-winning goal, I mean. He had 6 shots on goals as well with 2 hits and a block in 18 minutes and 11 seconds of time on ice. Uh, so that was a fun game, excellent game. Oilers really needed uh, a win like that on a pretty good team, because even though the Jets are reeling, as I said, they're still very good. They're still stacked with talent, and they still have Connor Hallebach, who certainly reminded everyone why he is a Vesna favorite tonight, despite the loss. I'm pretty sure Skinner has actually tied Connor Hallebach in wins uh, on the year. So if we ignore all the other stats, Skinner's better. Uh, Skinner's still pretty good, but anyways, uh, so good night for the Oilers. In most cases, they will play the LA Kings Thursday night, 7 p.m. in what should be yet another playoff atmosphere game. I'm sure my tensions will get high. I hope you're here for that one. You'll see it sooner if you like and subscribe and turn on notifications. And I'm going to actually do my first review of a video after this because there was just a terrible hot t hot take that. Uh, came out and it's it's bad. But anyways, that's it for this video. Thank you so for much. For, thank you so much for watching. Sorry, I tripped on my words again. Whether you're just here to pop by, use some white noise, or get some info and insight. There's my insight on that game. I think everybody had a really good game. There wasn't anybody I could point out and say, well, he sucked. I think everybody on the always had a pretty good, or at least an okay game to an excellent game. Um, and so that's it for today. I think I've said that three times now, and that's it for now. You can hear it again in the next video. I will see you soon. Thanks again. Bye-bye for now.